Welcome to whatever I actually end up calling these. But in these videos, I quickly go through whatever news I find interesting and ignore all the stuff I don't really care about or that everyone probably already knows about. As far as ads are concerned, if it's a minute or two long, then it probably won't have a pre-roll ad or anything like that. But if it's more than a few minutes, like this one will probably be, then it will have ads. So to start off, at and hacker Andrew, uh, that was sentenced to 41 months in prison, 3 years of release, released, and $73,000 in fines. Except he didn't actually hack into anything. Apparently he essentially just guessed an email address that at and uses to send some sort of personal information to iPad users, and walked away with email addresses of 114,000 people. Apparently had no security whatsoever, not a firewall, not even password protection. He eventually warned at and about it after the whole was patched and only gave the information to a reporter who agreed to censor the emails. The problem arose, however, when the federal government, Department of... What's it called? Department of Justice! Yeah, whatever. Hope that's it. Swooped in with the CFAA laws to arrest him. The Computer Fraud and Abuse Act was originally made in the 1980s to protect against anyone who tried to hack into government servers but hasn't been reformed or really touched since the 80s, and now expanded over time to criminalize terms of use violations, like all those 12-year-olds in the Bloods and Crips who we lied about their age when they made their account. These laws were also used on the late Aaron Swartz who committed suicide in January, after he found out he possibly faced decades in prison for, bulk down for the bulk download of academic journal articles in violation of terms of use agreement. Even though the database he downloaded from dropped the charges, again, Department of Defense swooped in. Another case was a few weeks ago when Matthew Keyes, the former editor at Routers, if I pronounce that right, who provided a password to hackers that changed the headline on the New York Times website. If this happened in real life and Keyes gave Vandal's keys to a printing press, and if they changed the headline there, he probably would face a minor charge, so like trespass or criminal mischief or something like that, and would have gotten at most a few months in jail, or more likely a probation or a fine. But under CFAA laws, he potentially faces 25 years in prison and a $750,000 fine. But obviously, with all the stuff going on, people have gotten annoyed. So now there's a growing effort to reform these laws, including uh, legislative drafted by Republican, I don't remember the name, so hopefully the picture says it with my terrible highlighting skills. If anyone knows a better way to do this, comment quick. So, what do you think the United States government will do? Pass this legislative and listen to the people, or completely ignore it? If you just completely ignore it, you're wrong, because they've decided instead to strengthen and expand these controversial laws. The people behind this law wanted to get it passed very quickly as part of a cyber week in the middle of April. The main things this bill does is adds computer crimes as a form of racketeering, makes it easier to be found guilty under these laws, more punishments, make, it makes it easier for the federal government to seize anything, and also says that you can exceed authorized access even if you have authorized access. Police in Omaha are taking some heat from the public for their handling of this minor disturbance about a car being parked, and how they thought it'd be fun to raid the house of this guy who was filming them. But not before more police arrived and decided it'd be fun to raid his house too. And then more police arrived and had the same idea. And then more police arrived and also thought it'd be fun to raid his house. And then some more. And a little bit more. And then this guy decided to be found up on just kind of the face a couple of times. Does this police force in this town really have nothing better to do than to send half a dozen police cruisers in a truck for this minor disturbance by a towed car? And so by filming a police officer? Also, they arrest everyone for assaulting an officer, and then you know, release this guy's dogs, and also apparently knock over some person in a wheelchair who is now in the hospital. There's already a protest on April 1st, which is probably when this video is actually going to get uploaded, so how'd that go? 
and uh, also an Amish released 1.7 terabytes of data, which who knows what they're going to find when they sort through that. Another company is joining the suing Apple bandwagon as Shanghai Animation Film Studios, which is backed by Chinese government, is suing Apple for half a million dollars. They say that Apple has been selling over 110 of its movies on iTunes without their permission. They are joined in this bandwagon with the company who won $60 million to settle a lawsuit over the iPad trademark, the one who is suing Apple for its use of the Snow Leopard trademark, and another one who's suing for Siri. Outside from Samsung and China, Apple is being sued by Intertrust, which is jointly owned by Philips and Sony, for breaking 15 patents on security and trusted computing. Intertrust is claiming that these patents are used in basically everything Apple makes, including the Apple TV. And in 2004, they won a similar lawsuit against Microsoft for $440 million. So they might have a good case here. A survey from Intel says that in any given minute, over 20 people are the victims of identity theft, about 640,000 gigabytes of global IP data is transferred, 135 people are infected with botnets, I'm not sure how botnets work, so I don't know if I phrased that right at all. Six new Wikipedia articles are published, there's 1,300 new mobile users, there's 204 million emails sent, 24,000 app downloads, $83,000 in sales, 100 new link, I don't know what that is. 61,000 hours of music watched on Pandora, that's actually kind of surprising. 20 million photos viewed on Flickr and 3,000 fo new photos are uploaded. There's 320 new Facebook accounts. There's 320 new Twitter accounts with 100,000 new tweets. 277,000 logins on Facebook with 6 million Facebook views. Over 2 million search queries on Google. 30 hours of videos uploaded on YouTube with 1.3 million video views. And that today the number of network devices equals the global population. The Los Angeles Times reports that Gaza Strip breaks a ceasefire by shooting two rockets into Israel. As if that's new news. If you want to read up about BP and the Deepwater Oil Horizon disaster, you might want to avoid Wikipedia. Editors are now claiming that BP has rewritten 44% of the page about itself, including information about its environmental performance. Apparently, the person in charge of this is from no less than their press office. It turns out that the IRS spent $60,000 of taxpayer money to make a Star Trek parody video. It also turns out that the video was made in a studio that might have cost taxpayers up to $4 million last year. Reports are showing that Walmart isn't having a fun time. Aside from problems with protesters, taxes, and trade unions, reports are showing that Walmarts are suffering from staffing problems. In the last five years, a number of Walmarts have risen by 13%, while the number of employees have only risen one and a half. This means that shelves aren't stocked and most cash registers are closed, causing long lines and customers not being happy like in the comments section of this article. Apple isn't having a fun time with media companies either. Now they're basically bashing Apple more and more about their warranty and saying that Chinese customers are having a rough ride, how the warranty doesn't apply to them and discriminates, etc, etc. A new Trojan for Macs called Yantu has recently discovered. The security company Dr. Webb says it's first encountered as a plugin such as a media player or a download manager. After it's installed, it basically functions as any other adware and people just have to deal with a few more ads, which make whoever created this some more money. But probably not as much as whoever made this chameleon botnet. According to security company Spider.io, a botnet of over 120,000 machines at at least 202 websites, earning whoever made this an estimated $6 million a month at the expense of advertisers. Apparently, the researchers who created a GIF that basically makes a census of the internet didn't make it legally at all. 
It turns out that half a million computers were hacked to create a botnet to continuously transmit data to the guy in charge of this. However, the creator did say that he didn't change any passwords and even left a little readme file that basically explained what was going on and how no personal information or anything would just be shown to everyone. A lot's been happening in the last 11 or so days in the oil industry. An Exxon pipeline burst spilling thousands of barrels of oil in Arkansas. A 35,000 barrel a day tar sand well in Alberta leaks. And a train carrying tar sands derailed in Minnesota. The spam fighting group Spam Hawes, sure, is a victim of the biggest DDoS attack in history, potentially tripling most ordinary DDoS attacks. What makes this one different, however, is that instead of targeting just some random website, it's attacking a domain name system server, which is connected to the underlying infrastructure of the internet. What that means is that instead of the website and the website only taking the blow of this, basically the internet as a whole is being slowed down somewhat. Apparently Netflix is the biggest victim outside the original server, which is now reporting possible slowdowns and maybe even inaccessible websites. In a similar time frame, Wells Fargo announced that it was hit by another DDoS attack by that, that group, however you pronounce any of that. The attack didn't really do much as the only real effect was a slight slowdown on the website. Apparently the group's claims that they attacked a whole bunch of other sites, but were so ineffective they didn't even notice they were being attacked. A new report says that up to 94% of people who run Java are using outdated versions of it. Also, about 75% are using versions that are at least 6 months old, two-thirds are using a version at least a year out of date, and half of total users are using a version that's over two years behind. Wow, that's a complicated pie graph. While this isn't bad on its own, many, many, many viruses, trojans, etc., etc., use exploits in Java, so it's generally recommended you keep up with it, which people aren't doing. I don't even know if I am. Fracking is taking another hit to its reputation as scientists are now confirming that the largest earthquake in Oklahoma history was indeed caused by wastewater pumped into the ground as a result of fracking and enhanced oil recovery, whatever that means. Not long after reports found a thousand dead ducks and 16,000 dead pigs in Chinese rivers, a new study shows that in 60 years, about 28,000 Chinese rivers have completely disappeared. Last but not least, international exams are now showing that Chinese third graders are starting to fall behind United States high school students.